right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is your boy, BQ, back up in the place to be. This is your Impact Lounge mailbag edition. You can get involved in the mailbag if you join the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. I've been told that some people are struggling to find that group. You're trying to use the search function and you're unable to find it. So it's going to be in the pinned comment of this video, a direct link. There's a couple of questions you got to ask. They might be a little bit outdated, but uh, as long as you um, put some kind of answer, and I know you're not a bot, right, Tony Khan, then uh, <laughs> we'll get you in the group. And, uh, you know, try to try my best to do these once a month, but I wanted to get uh, get my guy Mike in here to, uh, to, to uh, get a different perspective this time around so you're not just hearing my voice and uh i've already been chatting with mike for about an hour here because we just finished a podcast for your your channel right yeah man that was that was a lot of fun i've been uh been meaning to get you on over our well, we you and i talk all the time like we keep we keep like saying hey we should really get together soon we should really get together soon we just never do it but thankfully like we both had the time the opportunity and i i had the need you know jd was out so it just worked out perfectly and it's so early here. It's only 6.46 p.m. where I'm at. So it's like, hell, I can do two back-to-back. That'd be easy. It's 9.46 for me, so it's not a, it's not too bad. It was difficult when I was in Illinois. Do me a favor. Check your mic, your mic settings. Okay. Am I shouldn't have plugged in? Yeah, I think you might have come unplugged. Huh. Uh, it was different in Illinois when I was uh, a couple hours ahead of where I'm at now because then we were really <laughs> struggling. Yeah, I think I think it's good now, right? Now we're good. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, pick up on that before we hit the record button, but at least we didn't do the whole podcast. Yeah, yeah, it could have been you worse. <laughs> could have been a lot worse. So, uh, we're gonna get into these, and uh, I don't usually drop names when I do my mailbags, but uh, I think I'll drop some names today. Why not? They, they, I, I can attest they like their name being shouted out on the show. So, okay. Yeah. I guess I can get into that habit then. All right. Our guy, Ayo. Ayo Adebayo. Bam's cousin. Why do... So I had to get him to elaborate this, but he had asked, why do internet non-watchers care so much about WWE TNA relationships? So I asked him to elaborate, and he meant folks who are not fans of either company criticizing the relationship before it even started. Uh, and, and this is my, my take on it is that I think that Triple H and Shawn Michaels are doing the forbidden door better than Tony Khan because with Tony Khan's forbidden door, someone's walking through it every week. And, uh, it doesn't matter how, uh, how irrelevant that wrestler is from the, from X company, you know, said company they're, they're coming on the show. Um, they're usually doing the job. You know, you rarely beat Tony Khan's guys. Yeah. Uh, so the, the the forbidden door gets very old over there. Uh, with 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 you know with, with this NXT TNA thing, it was kind of like when Kenny Omega showed up for the first time on TNA. Like that was whoa. You know what I mean? Like that was something really big because it was something very new for TNA to do something like that. This is uncharted waters for NXT. Yeah. So. Um, I think I think it's a lot of jealousy. Is at the end of the day, is what I'm saying. It's just it's being done more effective on the NXT platform than uh, you know, than what Tony Khan's doing. You know, I don't know that it's been more effective because the Forbidden Door pay per view is one of the top pay per views of the year for AEW. They they make a lot of money with the Forbidden Door branding, um, and I think I think last year it was uh like the number one like most bought pay per view was All Out in London, and I think number two was Forbidden Door. And it's always, and it's been that way for the last couple of years. And it's usually an instant sellout. This year, not the case, because New Japan is cold. Um, and part of, part of the reason why New Japan is so cold is because Tony Khan signed up all the top talent. <laughs> so yeah. that that uh, that obviously that obviously sucks. So um, so that's that's been difficult. You know what? It's like it. It's almost like. You know, Saints fans, right? And I, I won't even you know talk about the you know your football division or my like the NFC West or the AFC West. Let's talk about Saints fans. They are hating the fact that Atlanta Falcons signed Kirk Cousins. They're hating on it. He's going to be a bust. He's a flop. He's what? Well, he's this. He's that. He's going to suck. They haven't played a single down yet. And, that, right. and that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of what it is here. It's like if you're if the team that you don't like signs a player 
that even though you probably liked that player before, you only don't like him because he didn't come to your team. It's one of those deals. And so they were they were cool with the AEW TNA partnership because AEW was you know in the dominant spot in that partnership and kind of you know essentially like Scott Demore allowed himself to get cucked on television, which is pretty embarrassing for him. But um, so they but they were okay with it then when Kenny Omega was walking around with the title belts, but they're not okay with it with the NXT thing. And I think it's because you know like AEW and NXT have that big feud and the TNA. TNA LOL still exists. Like that narrative is still out there and there's a lot of hate going on in the community and they just like to shit on anything that they're just not like a part of. Um, now where, where I come, where I came from with, I don't want to say shitting on it, but I, I was like pretty pessimistic on it is because every partnership that WWE's ever had has gone really bad and it's ended up being really bad for the, the secondary promotion. You know, if you take a look, it's like four, and I'm talking like over 40 years of history of that happening. Now, I understand that Vince McMahon is not there, but if you don't think that Vince McMahon had influence over Triple H and Shawn Michaels, you're out of your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I am I am not very optimistic about it, but what I will say is it's been fun to watch, um, and it's been kind of, I would say it's kind of neat, but I don't think it's making me want to watch weekly pro wrestling more than I did before. Gotcha. Interesting. I, I was under the impression that T, uh, AEW's television viewership numbers have always gone down prior to Forbidden Door. So maybe I don't I'm know, wrong. but I, you know what? I don't really follow like the the weekly rating patterns very much because it's so like, you know, and, and I quit, I, I quit reporting on the ratings for TNA, by the way, because A, they're not in the top 150 anymore, but whenever the numbers did come out, it's just like, it almost it just didn't matter anymore, you know. Um, so, but with with AEW's ratings patterns, they're just going down year over year, no matter what. Um, and and the Forbidden Door is always in basketball playoff season, and AEW every True. year during basketball playoffs. And I know BQ, you're gonna say the neckbeards don't watch basketball, but I I promise you, <laughs> some of them do watch basketball yeah. because the numbers reflect that every time it, an important game's on, going head to head with uh, with with Dynamite. Dynamite numbers go down. That's not a coincidence that it's happened every year since its inception. So I yeah, think there's some of that. There's also been, you know, look, they're they're partnering with with New Japan, and New Japan stars are not famous in America, so that's tough. But they have the the hardcore fans love it more, so they're more willing to spend more money on it. That's why they continue to keep doing it. That's why they have sold out not this year, but the two previous years. They sold out big big freaking venues in record time making you know almost i think either million plus gates and their pay-per-view numbers have been through the roof each year so that's why they continue to do it. that's why i said it's pretty big success for them okay then i'm i'm wrong on that <laughs> all good but yeah there, there's um aw fans are going to hate anything ww does they're gonna hate anything tna does you put them together yeah, just, well, just double the hate. I mean, and WWE fans do it to AEW fans, and, and TNA fans do it to AEW fans. Yep. You're in the brace for impact chat. Tony Khan can breathe the wrong way, and he's gonna get shit on for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, what, whatever's going on at AEW, they're gonna probably shit on, and that's just that's just the cycle. Like I said, like it's team sports mentality, right? Like the like if if the Dallas Cowboys sign somebody, chances are I hate them and their whole family, unless they come 100%. to the 49ers, and then I love them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Fun fact: I was actually a Saints fan prior to the Chargers, um, just because my my uh, previous relationship she was a Saints fan, so I was yeah. just by default. But uh, once once the Bolts moved to LA, then that changed very quickly. Then I felt like I had a home team. So, um, okay, AK Infinity. Who are the top three talents in the company that either need to be elevated or repackaged? So I actually pulled up a ro the roster here. Uh, okay. Let's, I'll just do. Okay. I, I'm not going to say we're going to go top three, but I'm just going to give you a couple names here and you feel like, you know, do they need to go a different direction or not? But let me ask you this. Do you, do you think that ABC needed to be, they're obviously going to split them up, and maybe they did yeah. tonight on the show. I don't, I didn't see it yet. They, they did not. No. Okay. Do you clearly they go in that direction? Do you think it's an, a necessary uh, split up slash repackage? 
No, no. I, I, I felt like there's still more juice left in the tag team. They, they, they haven't been a team for a year. Like, I, I yeah. think there's more to do, you know, I, I think, and then I think you, you split them up whenever there's nothing left to give. And right now the tag team division is dead. They got nothing going. And I think ABC, they're like the motor city machine guns to me. I think that they can just be a team for a long time. And then if they want to split them, be single stars for a little while and then always come back and be a team. I don't see any reason to split them up at this point, unless, unless they're, they got this heated blood feud thing that they plan on doing. Um, but I just don't see the need for it. it it's the most forced split up I've seen of a tag team in, in wrestling and that I can remember. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you remember the rockers when we were kids, right? The oh, reason yeah. why the rockers are split up is because Shawn Michaels had basically elevated himself to be way better than Marty Jannetty at that point. And the, the office could see that. And so like, we got to get him away from Marty Jannetty. And also Marty Jannetty was a bit of a problem backstage. Shawn Michaels yeah. ended up being that when he got more famous, but Shawn, but Marty Jannetty was absolutely a problem. So they broke them up because they had plans for Shawn Michaels. Now Marty Jannetty at, at this, I don't think they have a plan for either guy to elevate them to a bigger position than what they're already in. It'd be a lateral move. We might as well just keep them as a team where there there's they don't really have any tag teams to begin with you just keep them there because you need the teams yeah and with Shawn michaels it was kind of like okay we're gonna put the IC title on them abc they've been the fucking x division champion multiple times yeah. each, or yeah. i think they may only once so i mean you you're talking you have to really elevate them to like the main event scene where they're they're not going to win the title so it's 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 very strange um yeah so Looking at the roster here, it looks like they actually do a, a pretty decent job of repackaging someone when necessary. Um, I would throw Boopinder in this, uh, good old Boopy. I would throw him in this on this list, but I mean, the dude's just not on TV. Uh, he is a charisma vacuum, unfortunately. Oh, boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. They I, I do, you know, uh-huh. early, early on, early on, I was like, you know, I think I might see something in him, but. The more you see him, the more you're just like, you know what? Uh, I I don't I don't I don't think he has it. I I, I really don't. Um, you know, I just don't, I just don't know what you could do with the guy at this point. They they tried to do with him that what no company's ever been able to do is make an Indian a baby face. That being said, Mahab Mahabali Shear was a baby face at one point. He did the dance. It it worked <laughs> for him, but he was you knew his spot in the car. Like they were trying to present Boopy like he was going to. I think he won the one to watch award, which is like the most cursed award. Yeah. I don't know if he did or not, but they, they definitely presented like he would, they were going to try to elevate him, you know, right. um, but he couldn't talk. Uh, I hated his spear off the gargoyle spear. <laughs> I, anytime someone does a spear off the ropes, it's like the opponent has to cooperate. So it just, mm-hmm. um, I would have thrown camp champagne sing in this, but he's obviously been repackaged. Uh, Cody Diener has been repackaged for the worst. Do you like that gimmick for him? I, it, as far as like an opening, opening match undercard type. I think it's stupid. I don't think it draws any money, but I think it'll get like little kids happy, you know, in the audience. Cause they yeah, get yeah, to be yeah. a part of the show. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's very much like, you know, he's like Scotty too hottie doing the yeah. fucking worm. You know what I mean? Like he's just out there to interact with the fans. And so as far as like an undercard dumb gimmick, I'm fine with it. And cause you know, he's a motivational speaker in real life too. So he does yeah. a lot of talking with kids. So, I mean, I can see, uh, Rosemary's clearly being repackaged here. Um, Frankie Gazarian has been in the middle of one. Giselle Shaw's starting one. I think yeah. Jake, something might end up being repackaged, but they're so fucking slow at pulling the trigger on stuff. Like I thought he was turning heel a couple weeks ago and he's already back to being a baby face. Dude, he needs one like seriously, dude. Uh, he's he's needed one for a while. You know I'm always talking about him just walking around with no clothes backstage. I mean, he's everyone else has even looking at the roster page, everyone here for the most part has some kind of jacket, some kind of shirt. And this dude's just always dressed to compete. Yeah. So um but uh Man, there, there's really no one. There, there, there's, you know, they they try to repackage Khan. They completely messed that up. They're obviously so doing with Jonathan with Russell. with Khan. 
honestly, with Khan, I can give them five ideas on what to do with Khan, and it'll be fifty thousand times better than what they're actually doing. <laughs> yeah, really. So right now, like right now, for Big Khan, and I've thought about this because I I'm really tough on that guy. Yeah. I've been downright mean to him on my show, mainly because like you guys get a kick out of it and I get comments like, Hey, that was hilarious. What you're saying about con. So I kind of like crank up the heat a little bit. I'm like, Oh shit, this actually might end up getting back to him one day. So, but for him, like, you know, cause he just chopped off half his name, his WWE name. And now he's just like running with it and he's big. Okay. What's interesting about you? Uh, I, I would find out what's interesting about him and kind of like roll with that. And maybe nothing is interesting with him. I think with Mustafa Ali right now, they, they, every, every time they go to, they get, indie geeks and they put them on put them in suits and they're a part of his secret service i think big con needs to change his name to like ryan his name's ryan change his name to ryan connor uh and agent ryan connor something like that and he's head of security for mustafa ali and he can he can work with mustafa ali and and then go and interfere in matches and beat the shit out of guys for ali kind of kind of a heater like he was for diener but i think maybe he and maybe who knows maybe he has some comedic chops i don't know and he can play off of Ali a little bit, but I, I think that would be a better fit for him, better than him going out there and uh, and losing every single week. But then them still trying to tell me that he's a monster. What's crazy is he was part of the most one of the most over tag teams in the history of NXT. Yeah, he was. So what their only shot with him was if he would have steamrolled PCO for two or three straight matches. That's the only chance they had with him. They completely. Mess that up. They should repackage Matt Raywall out of the booth and out of the company. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's very good. No, 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 no. He, any commentator that's a babyface one match and heel the next, like you've lost me. Yeah, completely fucking lost me. Um, I, I would say fucking Mike Bailey, but I mean, I don't think we expect him to be long for this company. No, you know what? And I think that because I always thought that they should promote. Are you were you ever a UFC guy? Yeah. Yeah. So and you're pretty much aware of George St. Pierre, I'm sure. Mm, of course. Like one of the greatest fighters of all time out of Montreal. They should have made him George St. Pierre. Mm -hmm. Like just watch what George St. Pierre does. Watch his, his promos, watch his interviews and present him as George St. Pierre. Whenever Mike Bailey comes out, he's George St. Pierre and he's going to fuck people up with his martial arts. That's what they should have done. But instead, every time they, he's in a backstage promo, he sounds like a, a weenie. He really yeah. does. You know, there's nothing there's nothing fierce or tough looking about the guy. His whole gimmick is, is he does some really cool kicks and some really cool moves, and he has great matches, but there's not really a whole lot that's interesting about him. And I felt like if they would have went, like, hey, I'm like, and they should have been pushing the fact that he's like a Montreal superstar for a long time. I really felt like they could have, like, had something with him. Not that he hasn't had great match. He's been awesome. Like he's a great wrestler, but I felt like they could have made him into a star had they done that, and they just never went with it. They they he, they didn't know how to present him. And honestly, TNA has always had trouble outside of Kurt Angle. They've never really had success presenting guys who can really fight on Shoot, their team. Yeah, shooter. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, oh, I mean I fully agree with everything you just said. Uh, I, I dude, I said last week on my Impact review that Sammy Callahan. Even though he prides himself in reinventing himself, he has the same exact fucking character from when he debuted. And it doesn't matter because he did that weird comedy video a couple of weeks ago. And I said, dude, no matter what he does, he's the same person. Yeah. There's just no. He wears the same the same outfit, thumbs up, thumbs down. He's spinning all over the place. Yeah. And and you know, and unfortunately had that really bad ankle injury, which you know, he ended up causing him to get really heavy and I'm sure his diet wasn't helpful. And so he, and he never really got back to his fighting weight, essentially. Not that he was ever a body guy, but you don't need to be a body guy. Like I yeah. thought that he was very, I thought he was very good for a long time, but he just yeah. hasn't been the same since he got hurt. And it's unfortunate. You feel for the guy um, and you hate to see him go through it, but you just kind of want to like pull him to the side and be like, Here, man, we got to work on what you're eating. We got to work on your nutrition. And maybe you can't run right now, but maybe we can do these other exercises. Maybe we'll get you in a pool. Maybe we'll do something. Let's get mm -hmm. you back down to your fighting weight so we can uh, optimize you. And maybe we'll change up the character a little bit. I don't want you to be a hacker, and I don't want you to be a news guy. Like that. Like those two things are off the table. We got to figure something else out. Yeah, and, and they in a in a certain world are the same thing. 
Uh, not the yeah. same thing, but I mean, they're, they're, everything's just in the same like realm uh, of broadcasting. Um, yeah, it just, I don't know. I'm just going to ask about one more person here. Uh, Steve Macklin. Uh, you know what, man? I'm so, so frustrated with how he's been treated since he's been in the company. He never should have lost the belt to Alex <laughs> Shelley. Yeah. Yeah, he, he never he never should have lost the belt to Alex Shelley. I really thought they had something, especially with that PCO match with Under Siege last year. I loved that match so much. And he's just squirting blood, bleeding buckets. He's got this big shitty grin on his face. He's put it in Scott Demore's face. Like he looks like a mega star at that point, yeah. right? Like, oh, they got somebody, and then he loses the belt like two or three weeks later. And then they never really recaptured it. Yeah. Um I I just I feel like it's been a disgrace. And now they're using him to get other guys over. They're using him to get Nick Nemeth over. He had, in my estimation, probably the best Nick Nemeth match that he's ever had, to be honest with you, from the, the pay-per-view a couple months ago. He's had, with Mike Santana, you know, back-to-back -back excellent matches with Mike Santana with the design to, you know, make Santana look good. What about making him look good? Put him in the position to succeed. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you were, talk, you were talking on your show that he should have had a faction. I had a similar idea where... Like he, you know, had like special forces guys on his side, you know, the, the big beards and you know the military yeah. get up, you know what I mean? Like some of those guys you see in Afghanistan in civilian clothes, as opposed to like, you know, combat uniforms, like some of those guys surrounding him. And you could probably get some wrestlers that look like that. They, I just don't think they believe in him the way that we do. And maybe we're just biased because we're military guys and I've had the opportunity to meet him and interview him and stuff. But I, I think the way that they presented him has been a disgraceful. I agree with you. Um, but yeah, yeah, like that special forces look. I mean, you, you probably heard my rant when I, yeah, when they threw uh, the rascals on TV and uh, like fucking makeshift fucking military uniforms. I was fucking beside myself, I was so pissed off. Um, yeah, they're they're trying to do the Hogan's Heroes things from the 70s, and it was they just didn't work, and, and it was downright insulting to some people. So, yeah, yeah. And if you if you not someone who serves, you might be like, dude, it just. It, it's it's not it's not the same it's not of oh I, I i was i'm a doctor someone plays a doctor on tv it it offends me like it's it's pretty offensive when you fuck with a try to gimmick up a military um member it is when you try to when you try to make a military member look like a joke yeah 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 it's, yeah um all right michael murphy do you think that this partnership he's referring to the one with nxt We'll make networks look at TNA in a new way, maybe a better TV deal. So um, that's probably the next thing I'm going to get into next time I really like talk with people over there is because I'm getting asked all the time, like, are they going to get off Access TV? <laughs> They're probably not. Um, you know, I, I thought that because I was like, you know, Anthem just wants TNA to be cheap programming for Access. But they did just send Invicta over to CBS Sports Network, which CBS right. Sports Network is not a, like people think because it's got the CBS logo on it that it's a huge channel. It's not. It's bigger than Access, but it's not a very big channel. It's not a highly rated ch channel. Right. Um, and so I, I think that that does open the door. Now, the, the question was, is will, will networks be interested? And I don't think they will be unless they overhaul the production and the look of the TV show. There, nobody's going to buy the show in its incarnation right now. No way. Yeah, I've always said dress for the job you want, um, yeah. but I also don't think the TV numbers. So what TNA fans like to hang their hat on is, well, it's the number one show on Access. Like, okay, you're winning first, you won first place in a shit eating contest. Like, you know, the numbers as long as they're hovering in that eighty eight thousand. I mean, what networks really looking at it? You know, so well, it would well, have we got to put that in the really context. We have to put that in the proper context of what Access TV is. Um, at, the numbers are way down from the, when they were a year ago, but I think Access TV lost like 20% of the homes year over year because they, they were right. on Verizon Fios, and right. they got dropped from that platform. Now, they did open up in other areas, but they're not on the basic tier package. So um, I, I think that right now, it, Access TV is a dead channel, which is why they're doing so much to promote TNA+. Because I, I really think that they think that that's where people are going to find them the most. 
because people just like everybody's like, oh, the, the you know, they're not even in the top 150 with WWE. It's like WWE fans don't even know what Access TV is. They don't know where to find it. And if yeah. they do, they, they might not even have the channel. So I don't know how many people you guys are thinking are going to come over. Um, they're, they're losing so much coverage every single year that's greater than the, the rate that everybody else is. Like, you know, five years ago, TNT was in 92 million homes, right? And this year, they're in like 71 million, right? That's, like, that's over a five-year period. And so if you guys are wondering why AEW specifically started off at 1.4 million, and now they're down about what averaging like 750. Well, it's because they're in significantly less homes than they were five years ago, right? Um, that that's what it is. But it's even worse for Anthem. They were in like 50 million homes five years ago, and now they're probably in like 20 million. Yeah, I think they were in about 80 million when they were on Pop TV. Yeah, I think that I think that was the number. So yeah, I I would say they love the WWE rub. But, you know, I mean, it was reported last week TNA was disappointed that the numbers didn't go up, which they're probably not going to based off Jordan Grace showing up one time on a show. Uh, there's going to have to be some kind of consistency there. But, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't think the rub is going to help them in that sense. Uh, Pablo Fernandez. Pablo Chacon. That's from fucking, uh, what's that movie? What, what, which one did you say? What was his name? Pablo Chacon. Is, Pablo uh, Chacon. Fuck. Jennifer Aniston is in it. And uh, I was going to call him Zach Galifianakis, but he got a, num a name like that. They had to dress up as a family and go over the border in Mexico. Oh, so I remember. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Meet the, we're the Millers. There we we're go. the Millers. Yeah. That was a good movie. <laughs> Um, so Pablo Fernandez says, should TNA be in a permanent venue similar to the Impact Zone might loosen up the budget? Uh, you've talked about that a lot, the full sale yeah. thing. You know, if if that ever become you know comes to fruition, um, I, I'm just gonna say, when they were in Orlando, the only thing that killed that experience was seeing the same people in the crowd all the time. Yeah, and those people weren't even engaging with the fucking show. That was that was the annoying thing. Um, so it's, I don't know. Um, yeah. if you're in a, if they're in a venue, like full sale looks great on TV, you know what I mean? Yes. If Orlando looks great on TV. So it, it's, if you can make it look better. Yeah. But it's, it's also, does, does TNA have that kind of power in a singular city where maybe here in Vegas, but I, I'm, when I, the shows I went to, a lot of people there didn't watch TNA. They were just wrestling fans. They didn't yeah. know what the fuck was going on. So I don't know if they have that that kind of power in one singular city where they're going to show up every, you know, yeah. every week so, or whatever, you know, every month. Yeah, I, I, I think that's going to be a struggle. Um, but I think Full Sail University, because it's on a university campus and they'll probably just give out free tickets to the to the students and probably like recruit like from the pool wrestling fans from the local area um, and kind of be more of a studio setting. Right. Like, hey, you, you can come to a, like a live television production every single week. I, I think I think they can make it work. And I think Full Sail would would give them the benefit of they have students there on campus that are learning how to produce television that can actually get credit hours by helping out TNA produce their television show. Because that's yeah. what WWE was doing before, like college students were going there. And then eventually some of those college students that were helping out with NXT before ended up getting hired and now work with them over at the PC. So that that's I think that's the unique thing and that's the cool thing about going to Full Sail University. It actually saved the money on production costs uh, by yeah. doing that. You'll you'll increase the the overhead with as far as talent goes because you're gonna have to pay them every single week to show up. But a, you'll save money on trans and hotels because they've hired so many people off the NXT scrap heap and the WWE scrap heap that live in Orlando already. It makes total sense for them to be have a permanently fixed location. The other the only other alternative that I could see would be for them to tape regularly at the palms. Now I don't think they could ever, they, they would ever be able to do a thousand people a week at the palms, but they could probably do like two to 300 wrestling fans and then get some degenerate gamblers and some drunks from the casino and wrangle them up and bring them in and, and be able to do that if they want to go live every week at the palms. Cause I think, I think if you had like the lower bowl there, cause I've been to the palm that the pearl several times, if you down on the lower and you make everybody on the hard cam side, you could make that look really good on television. It's already a really nice venue. I think they could actually make that work too. 
Yeah, it, it, it's possible. Um, as I said, I mean, from the couple times I've been there, they're not all TNA fans there. So um, yeah, but for if they do, if they did go to Vegas, for instance, they would have to make it free for locals and free for military. And like, if you're staying at the hotel, you get in for free. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way they could charge every single week. They're, they don't have that kind of power. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I mean, it, TNA is on vet ticks. Yeah. So, I mean, military can't. Eh, but vet ticks is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. I mean, if they were just like, hey, present your military. Like, I've been to WWE shows where it does like, just present your military ID at the door. Or not the door, but at the, at the box office there. Give you a ticket, yeah. boom. You know, so yeah, if it, if it was something along along those lines. Vet, we, vet ticks is not free, bases. by the way. Vet ticks is not free. It's not that you have to pay a processing fee on vet ticks too. So I went yeah. to go see Bellator cage fighting here, Bellator MMA in Hawaii, and it was still fourteen fifty for me to go, which yeah, is yeah. relatively cheap. I'm not complaining, but if if you're gonna do um, free for military, they they wouldn't they shouldn't put them on vet ticks because you're not even gonna get people from Nellis and Creech and the different bases. And like if they were to be in Las Vegas, you're not gonna get everybody to spend fifteen bucks a week. This is not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, totally agreed. Uh, I mean, when I went to AEW, I still had to pay forty five bucks. Or no, 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 uh, 60, because there's four of us, so, you know. Yeah. Um, all right, I got two questions from Donald Hill. Do you think it'd be Don. a good idea to get rid of the knockout tag title altogether, maybe just have a knockout mid-card belt? Um, I wouldn't do a mid-card belt. I think that no. would be an even bigger nightmare than the tag team division. Uh, the tag team division, the problem is that I've said many times when they, when they were – Teasing the tag team division, they did this excellent job of pairing all the women up with a, a partner that made sense. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think I think the pandemic got in the way. I don't I don't really recall. By the time they had the knockouts tag team tournament, it was a complete fucking soup sandwich of just fucking shit. You know, the one there was like one real team that entered that thing and they won. Well, no, I think Decay was in it too. Um and it's just been a nightmare ever since. It's it's like you say, all you got to do is put a tag team together and you're you're going to challenge. Yeah. Um, now they don't even have challengers. They just have <laughs> two girls with the belts. I mean, it's I was a big proponent of them having these titles, but you know, I was also saying, "Hey, you can you can make it a traveling title to where it's they're defending it on the indies and then every blue moon it's on fucking TV." You know, like mm -hmm. you it could have been a prop belt, you know, but uh, but still found a creative way to defend it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been an, uh, that division's a nightmare. The, the, the knockouts tag titles and the digital media championship have been basically nothing. The knockouts tag division has been non-existent. They create a tag team just to make them challengers. And then every once in a while, those people will then win the titles and then they'll have the belts. They'll defend it once or twice. And then they'll, lose the titles and then they'll break up or somebody will leave the company. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's really just been, it's never really been a consistent division from its inception. I always tell people, if you can't do it well, don't do it. So if you're not going to do it right, don't fucking bother. Get rid of the division and let those, those women focus on single suits. That doesn't mean they can't have tag matches. They can, right. That doesn't mean they can't have friends and they can't create stables. They can, but if you're not going to keep enough talent around this to sustain a division, you just don't have it. Just get rid of it, right? But it was basically an excuse for the whole narrative, which is completely false, that TNA has the best women's division in pro wrestling. Not true, right? And they, right. But there was like, well, look, we have these tag titles, and we you know, we treat them with respect. It's like, no, you don't. You have the titles just so you can say that you have them. You don't have them because you actually respect women or that you respect the women's wrestling. You have them so you can tell people that. That's all it ever was. They don't actually respect it, so get rid of it and let them focus on the singles division. And no, no, no mid card women's belt. That's not necessary. God no. Um, the argument that a lot of people have is that there's not enough women out there. NWA Bullshit. has a women's tag team division. Yeah, and they're they they function perfectly fine. You, you know who NWA has, man? That that uh, kind of went slipped through TNA's fingers was a. Uh, they have a. Uh, Taylor Rising, who was like terrorizing, or I forget what the hell. What they call yeah, her? They, yeah, it was uh, no, it was Terror Rising because it was a play on Triple H's WCW name. Yeah, yeah. So she's Taylor Rising in uh, NWA. She's good. She's she's very good. Um, so they had somebody on the show tonight that wrestled Ash by Elegance. Her name's a uh, Jada. I want to say Jada Stone. 
She was really good. She was better than Ash. It's like, well, get rid of Ash and sign her. What are we doing? There's, there's, <laughs> there's people out there, but they don't have anybody out there recruiting. They're just waiting for people to get fired from AEW and WWE, and then they'll sign them. I, I was told that right now they're they're making a big put. Uh, Gail Kim is making a big. Um, she's doing a lot of scouting right now. So I was told. Well, I I hope so. Um, yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> but um, no, I was gonna say so. NWA does it. Women are wrestling. There, dude. The the Wow roster right now, outside of Santana Garrett, is almost complete nobodies. When they the first couple seasons, they had a lot of. Um, you know, Kira Hogan and Diamante were a team. They had a lot of recognizable names when they rebooted last year, whatever it was. I mean, the whole rot, they're all nobodies. I ain't heard of nobody on there. They still make it work. So there's, there's, there's women out there. They just don't know how to, they, they just don't have a plan to bring them in, you know, and, and make it worth a damn. So, um, all right. So I got another one from Donald Hill. He said, uh, in your opinion, what could be the best, worst, best slash worst scenario of having TNA? having an actual working agreement with WWE. So what are the best and worst case scenarios for um partners? yeah best case scenario we get we get some WWE stars either you know not only just NXT but main roster stars coming in and mixing it up with some of the TNA stars and TNA not completely looking like geeks, right? Like right. like their, their stars come over. I'm not saying their stars have to come over and like lose all their matches. I'm not saying like that. But they they do something to elevate the talent that's on the TNA roster, and then members of the TNA roster go over there and they get elevated too, and everybody works together and is happy. What is the worst case scenario? ECW is the worst case scenario. WWE sent some of their scrubs over to ECW: Al Snow, Just Incredible, Doug Furness, and Philip. Well, Doug Furness is one of the most amazing wrestlers ever, but he just never was a star in the states. Doug Furness and Philip Lafon and several other people. And, and ECW, you know, due to a lot of poor mismanagement, a lot of other things, but I think they got a little bit too reliant on WWE and ultimately bad business decisions. They went out of business, Smoky mountain wrestling, same thing. Jim Cornette comes over to WWE. Uh, and BQ, have you ever watched Smoky mountain before? No, dude. If you ever go down a rabbit hole, like there's a playlist out there where they, there's just every single Smoky mountain wrestling TV episode chronological order back to back from 92 to 94 some of the funnest like 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 territorial type television that you'll ever see jim Cornette, i i i love his style right uh if you're a fan of jim Cornette and like his his ideas on pro wrestling like that's it's very much a jim Cornette. but anyway wwe hires them right and then wwe they they sent over Shawn michaels they sent over randy savage they sent over the undertaker and they actually brought in the Rock and Roll Express to put them on TV and defended the Smoky Mountain Tag Team Championships and stuff I, like I that. I remember that. Yeah, and and then what happened to Smoky Mountain Wrestling? Went out of business, yeah. right? And and th and that's just that's just two examples. Progress Wrestling out of the UK, not out of business, but they're not the same, right? They right. they were forever changed by working with WWE. The UK indie scene, lots of things contributed to the UK indie scene, but the first shot was WWE coming in there and being their friends. Right. So <laughs> yeah. we and, and even so it's let's let's just say that Triple H and Shawn Michaels are pure of heart with this situation with TNA. And they but even then, just even if they're pure of heart and they don't mean to put them out of business, it could still happen because TNA could become too reliant on WWE. Look what happened to Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor became completely and solely reliable, uh, reliant dude. on New Japan Pro Wrestling because New Japan was hot. Anytime they would book the New Japan stars, houses would go up. And then when the New Japan stars went back to Japan, nobody gave a fuck about Ring of Honor. And then ultimately, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks and all those guys, they they liked those big arenas and those big paychecks they were getting with New Japan. And they ultimately went and helped start a company with Tony Khan because they weren't about that small company life. Um, it just it just can happen. So that's why I'm a little bit I'm I'm not the most optimistic. I'm like like I'm a little pessimistic, but I'm still kind of interested to see where this goes. Yeah. Um, for me, it's a bad case scenario. If this looks like the AEW partnership where, uh, AEW wanted the good brothers on TV. That's all. That's all they had interest in. Um, and, and they wanted callous. They wanted callous to get Omega over because they're right. turning Omega heel 
and Omega wanted to get the belts so he could do the belt collector thing. And I think that Callus was still under the employment of TNA and so to make it work, they had that partnership. And then once Callus was free of the contract, they just quit working with TNA altogether. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they had an agenda, uh, the back of my mind, NXT has an agenda. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> so <laughs> there was the, the, the angle on NXT where Wesley needed two partners. So everyone's like, Oh, well, the rascals are showing up, mm -hmm. you know, and of course the rascals tease it on Twitter and they use some fucking NXT dudes, you know? So it, they're not, NXT is not gonna be like, Hey, send your TNA people over. Like they don't fucking give a shit. You know, they're, they're no. care about, hey, can we get Jordan grace on our TV? They might say, Hey, can we get moose on our TV? You know, I, I just don't, I, 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 I don't want this like, to just come off like the AEW partnership where they clearly just wanted their one or two people. And then, you know, they, who, so what, so the people that TNA ended up sending over to AEW, what, like what happened? Right. So, okay. Good, good brothers ended up going to WWE uh, because I think good brothers went over to, to AEW and their fans rejected them. They didn't yeah. They fit. wanted to go there and yeah. that just didn't. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to go there before they signed with TNA. That's where they originally wanted to go. Uh, Tony Khan balked negotiations with south so they settled on tna and then they went to aew as a, representing tna and they did not impress right and the, right. the fans rejected them um and so they ultimately ended up not going there but then you take a look at the other people that went there um and had you know got to be on the show diana praza where's she at right now uh big bill w marcy where's he working right now yeah. I, I i that's where i kind of see part of this going like WWE is not going to have anybody from TNA on their show unless they're interested in eventually signing them. They're kicking the tires on them. So this is all about Jordan Grace. I think Joe Hendry is very much going to be on that show at some yeah. point. Whether if he might be this weekend, it, I don't know if he can make from Chicago to Scotland, like against all odds to Scotland on time. But I think he'll be in that battle royal next week, right? I I, th I think yeah. that and anybody that WWE is interested in, and then once their contracts up, WWE is going to take them. They did the same shit in the 80s of the territory system. Vince McMahon was telling all these small territories, hey, send me videotapes. Like he, he, he told Georgia, hey, send me videotape of, uh, of Roddy Piper. We'll, we'll air it on our show. And next thing you know, Piper's, Piper signed, right? And like he was do doing that everywhere. Uh, and like, you know, buying up television time in all these small territories. It's been a predatory business forever. And I always think there's an ulterior motive here. Yeah. And a, a lot of my listeners, they get very mad when I bring up W. Morrissey. Um, well, you, you don't you don't have any other examples. You brought up Deanna Perrazzo. Deanna Perrazzo was never the same after she went and wrestled on AEW. Yeah. You know, um, at, at that point, she was clearly checked out, uh, tried to get out of her contract early. You know, um, it's, that's just going to happen. You go send someone to play in front of a big audience and like, yo, I, I want to do this. And you, you know, can't so. blame them. You can't. Yeah. You can't blame them. And NXT is not a big audience as far as the arena goes, but they do do some pay-per-views here or there that they scale things up. Uh, you know, we, we saw it a lot with the takeovers in the other NXT era. And then, of course, I mean, what do you got? You got now seven times people, six to seven times people watching the show on TV. So, yeah, well, and then Jordan Grace goes to that performance center. They see how professionally everything's ran. They have a whole team. They have a medical staff. They got all that stuff, yeah. like actual television producers and stuff like that. It's like a professionally ran company. And she has to come back to the rinky dink super indie organization of TNA. Right. And so naturally, where do you think she's going to want to end up? Right. And she's, and she's on t Twitter saying, Oh, we need to do a TNA versus WWE. What she's saying is like, Hey, I want to keep doing this. I want to keep working with these people. Is she trying <laughs> yeah. to be a catalyst for the company? Absolutely. She's trying to represent the company. Absolutely. I'm not saying she has a yeah. hidden agenda, but, um, First of all, that's never going to happen. They're never going to do a show like that. Um, no. But it, I, I was pointing out when I was watching Jordan, even when she was wrestling the the the, uh, the 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 job girl on NXT, there was a look of joy on her face that we don't see in on TNA. I'm not saying she's not happy to be there. She is. She clearly is. But but there is a just if you just put that match next to anything she's doing in TNA, there was a look of joy and excitement on her face that she was just eating it up. You know. Yeah. So um, let's see. And let, and let, let me straight up ask you here. Uh, 
my my listeners hate when I fucking say this. Um, I, I pretty much guarantee she's leaving. What what are your thoughts? Oh, I I hundred percent. Look, but okay. okay, who who are her opponents right now in the company? She's got nobody to work with. She's been there forever. She's been there since what twenty eighteen. She's done everything that she can possibly do in the company. It's time to go. Look, she can go for a while and then always just come back, you know. But the, and I think that she'll always uh, you should always be a representative of TNA. Yeah. She always because like like that was her first television exposure. She's been with the company for so long. She's had opportunities to leave before and she stayed. I think at this point the money offer is going to be so great. Uh, and I think that WWE wants her so bad. They want her so bad. They're willing to let her carry her championship onto their television. They're willing to partner up with a smaller promotion just to be able to get dates on Jordan Grace. I think it's absolutely happening. Okay. <laughs> and and you can't blame Jordan. It's no, a business. No. You can't. Yeah. She has to go. She does. And TNA has to let her. And I and I think and I don't think TNA will hold her back. I think TNA will be like, you know what? Fuck, that's a great offer. I think you should take it. And they'll be proud of her when she does go because they're human beings and they're business people too. Yeah. And a lot of people tell me, well, it's not all about money. It, it is for 99% of the people in this world. I, ha I hate to tell you. There's that's a what, very small that's percentage what, of wrestlers that are yeah. like, you know. That's, that's, what, that's what poor people typically say, right? It's, it, money is very freaking important, especially when you got family to take care of and you got bills, right? Yeah. Like money is very important, right? Honestly, yeah. I've been in the Air Force 20 years. If the Navy were to call me up right now and say, hey, we'll give you a, a big time promotion, a signing bonus, and you don't have to ever deploy or go on a ship that you want to come over. I'm like, well, see you, Air Force, later. Like, I would do it in a heartbeat. This is a yeah. business. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in that boat right now. I'm supposed to talk with my first sergeant tomorrow because they, they don't want me to retire. They want to find me a full-time first sergeant position. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I left my first sergeant phone. Yeah, it's it's downstairs because I, I it's been going off all day. I'm like, I'll just get back to you guys later. Right, right. So <laughs> that's funny, but uh, and I don't want to do that. But it's like, man, for to to pay me that, I, that may be too good to turn down. You know what I'm saying? So it's will they will they get you in the next stripe? They get yes. you the roof? Yeah. yeah, that that would be tough to pay. I I got to tell you, being a first sergeant. I don't have the diamond. I'm not. I'm not going to go to First Sergeant Academy because then I have to give a four year commitment. Now this is inside Air Force baseball, so you guys can feel free to skip ahead thirty seconds. But um, I, it's been probably one of the most rewarding things I've done in my career. To be perfectly honest with you, it's been it's been pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see. I, my commander texted me last night. He's like, "Hey, get with the First Sergeant. I'm gonna pitch this to you." So we'll see. Um, AK Infinity got a couple more. What would be your plan to improve the, the knockouts division, elevate the DMC title, and lower cards respectfully? Respectfully, um, that's a big question when you're talking about all these divisions. Um, I, I'll try to make my answer very quick, but with with the knockouts, there's a lot of talent out there. Yeah, you're not paying these women salary. You. Dude, NWA has double the 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 uh. Ro I'm not talking about the women. I mean the roster. They have like double the roster TNA does, because Billy Corgan's like, dude, I'm paying these guys their fucking indie fee. Like, why not? You know. Mm -hmm. Um, and and he's able to keep things ex extremely fresh because of it. Um, and you know, uh, I, I I would just get in those indies a lot harder. Uh, the the TNA fans fall in love with the win the. The women very easily well wrestling fans in general um every single time you see a jobber on tna television that's a female you see that sign this person tweets you know what i'm saying like yeah. the, they'll buy into them very quickly just give them some fresh talent uh the digital media it's dead um everything they said it was going to be in the beginning never came to fruition they had an opportunity to make it a tv title when they rebranded and they decided we're going to keep this fucking belt going. And it's been a nightmare. And if AJ Francis cannot elevate it, nobody can. And um, the lower card, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, you you got to have jobbers in a company. I used, I've, I've mm -hmm. contradicted myself in the past because I've caught myself saying small companies don't have room for jobbers. And then I've, and then I've caught myself saying, well, small companies need to have their jobbers too. So <laughs> I, I don't even know. The answer to that um 
Well, you, you definitely need. I just think there has to be people to lose plan. matches um, because yeah. I think I think their top guys honestly are, are getting beat too much because they never really have a title challenger with a winning streak. Matt Hardy still doesn't have a pinfall victory over anybody in the company. Yeah, no you know one's I mean? hot. Joe Hendry's yeah. the hottest yeah. record wise. But um, I don't know. You, you think that the digital media is pretty much dead? I mean, I you know what? I I think they finally got it on the right guy. You know, I, I thought Matt Cardona could have done something with it, but they never, you know, he wasn't signed, so they never really got behind him. Yeah. And then I and then I thought Joe Hendry could have done something, but I'll be honest, when Joe Hendry had the title, I thought it was beneath him, and he was doing too much comedy shtick. And what he's doing right now is exactly what I've been wanting him to do. Like, he can still be funny, charming, and engaging, but he can also be an ass kicker. And that's what yeah. we saw at the end of the episode last week is he was being an ass kicker, and that's what we were wanting to see. Can he fire up and beat, beat a man's ass? And, uh, but I, I think AJ Francis, like him doing it and going around the indies and defending it, and then hopefully TNA gets that footage and it just starts showing it on their YouTube and their their app and Twitter, and then he's working. He should be defending it like, you know, almost every single week against like local local guy local guy whoever is like they're going to Kentucky and it's like hey who's who's the top indie star in Kentucky? Okay, well, we'll come in and give you a shot against AJ Francis. And uh, he'll sell for you and make you look good, but ultimately he's going to beat your ass. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. kind of do stuff like that. I don't think it's ever going to be an important title to where like people are going to be you know, clamoring to to see who holds that belt. As far as the knockouts division, look, they need to get rid of the tag belts. They need to sign more people and then have have some meaningful feuds and meaningful characters. And, and uh, ultimately, Jordan Grace needs to set up the next crop of people. And I don't think that they need to replace – because Jordan's definitely leaving. I don't think they need to replace some of the veterans that they've lost with other veterans. I think they need to just go younger, go fresher, and bring in some new ideas. Yeah, and I think when Kylan King returns, I think I think they're going to get behind her big time and try to make her a next Jordan. Um, that's kind of personally what I think. Uh, they got a couple of women they can elevate. Killer Kelly, you know, like the fans will be very much behind a push for her. Uh, if she ever comes I- back, I don't know what that was going on with her. So when I when I chatted with her, uh, I, I wish I would have asked her more than I did, but um, I know she kind of freaked out when the when when the when it came out online that she that she left because she didn't, and she thought she was fired. You know, she made it because she said something like, "Oh my God, did I lose my job?" You know, she said that was like her her uh, her reaction when she kind of saw everything. So we'll we'll, we'll see. I know she's doing a a, a D level horror flick at the moment, so. Um, yeah. I, I would say with the digital media real quick, I thought Dirty Dango, when he started the new gimmick with the little vignettes, I, I thought that would have made a lot of sense too uh, Yeah, with what he was doing. Uh, AK Infinity also asks, if either of you were in charge of marketing, what top three things would you get done from Slammiversary to BFG? We're not going to talk about top three, but l- let me say real quick, uh, there's a there's a confusion on what marketing is uh, a lot of people think it's promotion they think it's I, I you know i saw i saw a tna fan the other day say no they're great at marketing they they hand out flyers um, <laughs> that's you, basic <laughs> yeah that's that's promotion and promotion is a part of marketing but good marketing is is um like an example I, i've used this example in my podcast before car insurance like they're promoting car insurance the marketing campaign is the fucking gecko, the, yeah. the caveman, the fucking, I'm not saying you need a mascot, but a marketing campaign is how do we make what we're promoting attractive to people? Marketing, it, it elicits emotion out of people. It makes people want to take action. It makes them want to do something. It makes them want to care. And I'm putting in very simple terms here uh, because there, there's a, there's a confusion on, Hey, we're, you know, TNA is retweeting stuff and they're, you know, basic level promotion. That is not marketing. That is promotion. Promotion is part of marketing. But when I've, when I've gone on, you know, on the podcast and be like, Hey, when the women were doing queen of the mountain or when they were doing ultimate X, their social media needed to have individual videos of them saying why they needed to win this first time match. And, And day by day, you're doing something to, to excite people for that match that you're trying to promote like that is that is marketing the simplest way is get is doing something to make what you're when you're promoting something to to get them to want to take action on what they're what they're seeing being promoted so um yeah 
the top so so we're not gonna get into like the top three things between slam reverser and, and, and bfg but um i do think they just have to do a better job of creatively tying how can i explain it so the royal rumble you know is is leading towards wrestlemania season right right and then they have the pay-per-view that's kind of you you know it's the road to slam anniversary tna doesn't have that i think they're going to start the call your shot gauntlet as the road to hard to kill but they have to find a way to tie the pay-per-views together a little bit more to to getting get to get people invested in what's going to happen in the in the future a little bit better um and I think what I said was missing from Rebellion was they they made it an Impact Wrestling pay per view instead of a TNA pay per view. Hard to Kill was a yeah. TNA pay per view, and then they just kept the name TNA and put on an Impact Wrestling pay per view for Rebellion, and that's why people weren't excited about it. Um, I think I think for Slammiversary, for Bam for Glory, you just got to find some elements of what people <clears throat> miss from TNA. I brought up Lethal Lockdown. Yeah, um, that's that's what I was going to talk about. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, they well. So you know, my idea of marketing is like you're you're beating somebody over the head with an idea. I think the peak of pro wrestling marketing was like when I was a kid. Mean Gene Oakland was doing his hotline, and to this day, I'm 41 years old. I know the phone number. It's one nine hundred nine or nine ninety nine hundred. They said it over and over again, and like that was the phone number to call if you wanted to get the wrestling news and wrestling scoops from Mean Gene Oakland. Right? Marketing is beating your beating your audience over the head with this idea and what your identity is and what your brand is. And I think the number one thing that TNA needs to do is find their catchphrase, find their idea, whatever it was. And I know back in the day it was cross the line or we are wrestling or whatever it is right now. AEW is trying this whole thing with, you know, where the best wrestle WCW had, where the big boys play, like, you know, stuff like that. So they need, they, you know, the AEW was a challenger brand and it became a movement, right? Because they had a mission statement. The mission statement was to take down WWE and, and be the company that WWE isn't. I don't know what TNA's mission statement is other than they just don't die, right? It's like, hey, we're still yeah. here and we're not dying. And I think like that's not a very good mission statement because I can't get behind that. I can't get behind something that just won't die. I want to get behind something that will succeed, create a movement that everybody wants to be a part of. Now, as far as Slammiversary to, to Bound for Glory, we need a hook for the pay-per-view. We need something on Slammiversary, just like you were saying, um, whether it be like, hey, Joe Henry is going to be in this match here, and if he wins the match, then he gets to go on to Bound for Glory, you know, and be in the main event because the main event of Bound for Glory is the biggest spot in the company, and also it's very likely to be in the UK. Like we got to get to that point, right? So we we need to we need to have a journey to follow. We need to have a story arc built, and the culmination of that story arc needs to be a Bound for Glory, and it's got to start at Slam Anniversary. All of, like you were just saying. Um, Royal Rumble to WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble this year. So we all knew, you know, like that's the destination. Okay, now we have to be on this ride. And there are twists and turns along the way, right? He lost a spot at one point from The Rock. Rock took a spot, punked him out. And then he was able to get it back. And then now we have now we have the destination. Oh, now we're gonna have this tag match, this big tag match. So now now we have the hook. Now for TNA, they gotta do something bigger. They don't go big, they never go big. They stopped doing cage matches. They haven't done a cage match since 2019. You know what I mean? They, they got to get something done. They need an angle. They need a hook. And they need a marketing campaign to get everybody to get behind them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think they still kind of do the cross your li cross the line. But what, what does that mean? At this you never point, hear them say it. It, yeah. it just pops up on the screen, but they don't say it. They, they You, you got to beat people. Over, if that's what you want your thing to be, go go with it but then then that has to be part of your attitude in the in the in the show like what line are you crossing yeah, yeah. they don't cross any lines yeah i mean they came up with for tna plus you whatever it, it's kind of a long complicated one whatever you and see nothing until you've seen everything or whatever yeah i mean that's at least that's uh you know a, uh, there's a mission statement involved there kind of like you were saying um you know, and WWE and they had the network at one time, the nine ninety nine, and the people were yes. can't, like that's that's you know, um, I don't okay, I don't know if this this one because these questions came like a week ago. So where do you think TNA stands with all the recent releases? Um, I, I already talked about that on your podcast, and that's going to come out later. But everyone was released for a reason, all the way from Scott Demore to Dave Penzer. Um, no dates after August. 
Is that when the is that when the August that, that, is that was the Meltzer thing went, where he said they have no dates booked past August third. And at the time there was no announced dates, but we all knew that they had dates booked past that. They just didn't make the announcements yet because that's typical TNA. They only announced stuff a couple months ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was from Saul Valentin, but we um so Colby Cooper, where do you think BFG is going to be this year? Are rumors true about them wanting to take the pay-per-view international? So I haven't asked that question, but it kind of seems like that's what they're the rumors yeah. are leading that direction, right? Yeah, M Mike Johnson from PW Insider has been on this. I think Johnson knows already. He's just been getting a little bit of hints. I have full belief that it's going to be in London, England. Yeah, and Mike he he's a pretty good um He's a pretty good insider for TNA. I, I don't like the dude personally. Uh, I just have a grudge because he quoted one of my podcasts years ago when Eli Drake was on and didn't credit me. Yeah, uh, it's typical. Which which upset me. So now I don't credit anyone. I'm like... My, Mike Johnson is very much PR. Credit. Mike Johnson's PR for TNA. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, so, they use uh, him as a surrogate. You know what I mean? But, but I've seen him at events that I've done like... Uh, the couple that I've done that were, uh, I was like media, he's been there. So they, they, you know, he's the one like, I don't want to say legit. I don't think wrestling media people are media people. They're not legit journalists to me. They're just guys who talk about wrestling. Um, let's see. AO saying, do you see Anthem restructuring both TNA effective brands similar to TKO with WWE UFC? What do you think on that? I don't really care to answer that. Yeah, I I I, th I thought that made sense, but um, you know, BQ, I thought you had some new information that uh, that that wasn't exactly the case. But the two companies will be working more closely together from now on, because I think uh, you know, Demore, the was what we just said on our podcast, and you'll elaborate more on the lounge later. But Demore was kind of like too way too controlling with it, and was kind of blocking a lot of those things. Yeah, so we're we're gonna see more anthem involvement definitely going yeah. forward. Randy Adams. Randy Adams, do you think TNA and their ghost of marketing team <laughs> will capitalize on this? And he's ref I'm, he's referring to NXT. With the amount of eyes HBK and Hunter got on TNA with just adding them, not adding, but at-ing them in those Twitter posts, I feel like the iron is hot, especially with what looks to be a Joe Hendry push. Um, I don't know exactly what he's asking here. Uh <laughs> But do do we think TNA is going to capitalize on this? Um, I, I I've been like I said I I just been told they're very happy with how this is going so far. They right. know that the alt the the machine is WWE. Like you're going to get a Jade Cargill, such a great example of how she became this like star being involved with WWE compared to everything AEW tried to do to get her to that level. It never happened. You know, um, they're they're aware of the um what they have ahead of them, but um. I, I don't know. I guess the conversations I've had, I'm actually more confident in this management group than I was Scott Demore. I wouldn't have said that a week ago. But now <laughs> that I have the information I have, yeah, uh, you know, I, I think they're going to handle this better than Scott handled AEW. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll see. the The thing about it is, is there's so much WWE programming out there already. WWE fans, I don't think they have time to watch TNA. No. You know. And yeah. so if, if anything, I don't think it's going to bring over any WWE fans. If, if it does, it's probably not going to be that many. I, what I would, my hope would be is it would energize the already existing TNA fan base to get them to watch more frequently and prioritize the show better and pay for the app, which I am now a subscriber to. Once again, I decided to go ahead and spend my money today and pay yeah. for it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, AK Infinity got another one. He's saying top three indie talents. He likes his top three stuff. Top three yeah. indie talent, indie talents that TNA could benefit from. Um, Shit, I wish I'd have known this ahead of time. I'd have done a little bit of research, but I, yeah, I have, I, I have, I have a couple in mind. But same here. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I usually handle these. Uh, there's my cats fighting. Usually, um, I, with these mailbags, I just, I just, I, I'm looking at the questions for the first time for the most part. Sometimes I glance them over. Um, just to make sure I understand them, but I, yeah, yeah I, I didn't really prepare for this. Uh, so for me, like Titus Alexander would be number one on my list. I think he's I've the heard hottest good things. Yeah. I, I think he's like probably the hottest indie dude out there right now. Um, 
and he, he's been working pro wrestling Noah, and he's actually been been pretty impressive over there. And I think he's um, he brought he brought back um, um, oh gosh, what what is his freaking name? Uh, the guy who runs Noah. Damn it, he's been in TNA several times. I can't. Uh, it's Mara it's Fuji. late. I Mara Fuji, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he he wrestled Mara Fuji here recently, and he's um, had some good remarks. There's these guys that for, so Prestige Russ, not Prestige, um, DPW. Um, have you ever heard of them? Like that indie promotion in North Carolina. Um, they 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 actually just got themselves onto Russell Universe, which is the platform that Noah's on, and they got a tag team um, called. Um, and this is with Kevin Koo and um, another guy, Brazilian dude, but they're they're they got a really cool tag team. Um, it's called uh, Violence is Everything, and I think they they would be pretty cool. I've seen seen some of their stuff before. Um, I, I th those are kind of guys like I would take a look at. I know they've already brought in Sinner and Saint. I thought they were pretty impressive, and they're they're bringing those guys back again. I would much rather have like unheard of names from the Indies than like the Maharaja. Because I feel like they've already exhausted yeah. that former WWE fan base already. Yeah, and it's 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 not really going anywhere. Um, I've heard good things about Kevin Blackwood. Um, yeah, yeah, that guy too. Yeah, uh, there, there's a lot of women out there that you can really get your hands on. Um, again, I used the NWA as an example. I used them getting Taylor Rising as as an example. You know, they, they got this. Uh, NWA has this chick Natalia Markova. She's Russian. I mean, I don't know where they fucking plucked her from, but you know, she's, she's yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, she's pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, she came out of obscurity. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And she's pretty good, and will probably be their champion one day. So, um, there's, there's, man, there's scouting out there to do for. I, I would say for the men, it's very difficult because AEW is literally trying to sign every single indie guy that has any kind of name. Yeah, you know. Um, there's a guy in the UK named uh, Michael Oku that I think would be pretty good. Um, and everybody's going to say, oh, he's a, a black guy from the UK. He must be Leon Slater. Couldn't be couldn't be more different than Leon Slater. Like Michael, o I saw a Michael Oku versus Will Ospreay match from like a year or two ago. And um, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen better selling in that than, than I've ever seen in that match. And it was from Michael Oku. He was just very, uh -huh. it was like Ricky Morton from the Rock and Roll Express, how good he was at selling the the beating that he was taking from Will Osprey. It was such a dramatic match. It's such a beautiful match. I loved it. Um I, I'm surprised that he's not already in AEW to be honest with you. I, I figured that that was probably why TNA couldn't get him is because he was holding out for AEW. But I, I think that he would be fantastic. And then there was like this German dude that won gut check and yeah. and TNA just never brought him in. <laughs> so like yeah. I, I'm starting to think that, that was that gut check is fake, which I think we've probably known forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's there's a chick named Succubus that um really weird name and very kind of a weird gimmick too but she's uh killing it on social media right now as far as building a social media following and you know um, it's one of those people that I would like invest in early kind of like AEW invested in uh Nick Wayne early even though yeah that dude's not shit but you know that's why NWA is doing the territory system because they're trying to get in on people early and they're bringing in mm -hmm. some fucking they brought this guy in named cheese last episode one of the worst workers i've ever seen in my life um so you know sometimes you throw shit at the wall and it falls to the floor immediately but um sometimes you gotta take a fucking chance man just just find well, people no one's heard of yeah well you know what but i think you know nwa is in the position to do stuff like that they're like not not many are, people yeah. are talking about the show nobody really watches it and that's okay. They they do good selling tickets. You know, tick their their the tickets are really cheap, and they get on the ground. And local indie companies will get out there and kind of sling for them. And I, and I, they do a very good job. Um, but you know, th that's the best way to find talent is just to go to these markets and just like hey, go to the wrestling schools and the local indies. Like, hey guys, look, we got all these spots, and just let them go. You know, and, and I think Tony Khan did a great job of that in the early days of AEW Dark. He was like inviting everybody from all over the Indies, from all over the States to come to Florida and work for work. And they had hours of dark tapings and that was just their way of recruiting talent. Yeah. 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 They did a good job with that. And, and Thunder Rosa's got the mission pro for her all, all female um, company. And, and they try to act as a feeder for AW at one point, but I mean, she's truly getting women uh, TV ready there. Um, so, I mean, yeah. There, the, the the chicks are out there. The NWA just plucked the King Bees from there, and they're 
they're tag team champions now. I mean, so it's um Pat Crothamel is asking if they get 5k at slam anniversary. If I messed up your last name, I'm sorry, dude. I've asked you in the past and I apologize. I just call him Pat. <laughs> yeah, I'm really big on not slaughtering names because that happens to me. Um so I, I take I take it seriously saying people's names correctly. Um, but he goes, if they get a 5K slam anniversary, will you eat a raw hamburger in between two pop tarts? Uh, the the answer is no. I think we're wearing a big con t shirt is embarrassing enough. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, Tommy Allen B is the last one. Uh, I think we've kind of talked about this, but he said, how you like to see the partnership evolve between now and the end of the year? I guess that's a different take on it, but um, I, I just want to see TNA can you continue to get the rub being involved with them. Uh, you're not going to get like they're they're teasing Tatum Paxley or whatever coming over. Like that's <laughs> the level of talent you're. Yeah, getting. she's pretty good, but that's who you're getting from NXT. Like you're not getting, you know, uh, you know who I think they're going to get eventually because they're. I think she's going to get released as a uh, Gigi Dolan. Yeah. Well, because Tatum Pax is doing her gimmick, isn't she? Yeah. To an extent, yes. Yeah. Uh, Gigi Dolan is a terrible actress. And I think that, like, after a while, dude, when you're at NXT and you're just like, dude, you can't fucking talk. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, yeah, Tatum Paxley, when she was like, Brie, B. Pre. What the fuck was her name in AEW? B. Priestley. Priestley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, I think she got a. When when TK just randomly got him a bunch of rid of a bunch of UK talents, because he didn't want to fly him over anymore. Yeah, well, I think it was during the pandemic. Yeah, it's during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yo, th- those are the type of people you're getting from NXT. So I, I just I, people really need to keep their expectations very low and just understand it's about the rub. And I just hope that they continue to kind of get that rub because when they got the AEW rub. The viewership went through the roof, but they put on a shit ass episode and then they went right back to where they were. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, well, one of the things I would like to see, and I don't, I, I clearly, I don't think that we're going to get it. Um, I, I think it's a win if we get one match with AJ Styles. I'm not even talking like, hey, can we get AJ versus Josh? I'm not even talking about that. I'm like, can we see like Josh Alexander, Eric Young, and AJ Styles in a six man? Versus like three other dudes and the baby faces win, you know. I mean, just to see AJ on TNA television, I, I think where where eventually I'd like it to go is like, hey, TNA's got a big show, and WWE is willing to send one of their talents over there, right? And then uh, NXT has a big show, and TNA is willing to send a, a talent or two over there, you know, just you know whatever. And then it's a mutually beneficial relationship. The problem with the AEW and uh, and TNA relationship that they had is that AEW very clearly saw them as lesser than and wanted to let everybody on their television know that 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 not only were they not partners with TNA but TNA is beneath them, and yeah. so they made them out to be beneath them and less than at all times. In fact, they never even promoted the fact that Rich Swan could potentially be their world champion after Rebellion. They didn't even want anybody to acknowledge that, so they always treated it as like lesser than as of. As right as of right now, we're we're Thursday, June thirteenth. I don't, I have not gotten the feeling that NXT has been treating TNA as being lesser than, and they've in fact they've made Jordan Grace look like a really big star, and then when they beat her, they protected her, uh, yeah. and so I'm like, okay, well that's been pretty good, that's pretty cool. Yeah, something else popped in my head ab- about it. Oh, I um, what I think is could be a very strong possibility is that uh, they might be able to get. Like when the when the Hall of Fame comes up, they might be able, you know, because every year they put one person in the Hall of Fame. I think they did two last year. They might be able to get the Bobby Roods this time. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying with with this partnership, and I can see TNA finding that beneficial. Where while the mm-hmm. fans again are talking about, we want the Undertaker yeah. and all this shit. You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. We 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 want Roman Reigns versus Moose. Yeah, we're not getting yeah, that. So <laughs> if you put on on a realistic level, I could see. Uh, the good people of TNA saying, well, we would love to, uh, you know, because I mean, some of these TNA um, Hall of Fame inductees, I'm, I'm not saying they're not worthy, but it's like one year it's Raven, you know, like you're re- you're reaching sometimes. Uh, I, I think this can open the door a little bit to just 
making it a little more a little more legit, I guess. Yeah. But uh yeah, we went an hour and fifteen right after we went an hour for your show. Yeah, man. Uh I think it's a uh, probably time to, to, to call it a night. <laughs> yeah, man. Pretty late where you're at. It's eleven. Yeah, eleven. I gotta I gotta be on base in the morning, so yeah. Or normally Friday's my day off, but uh I got a got a drill day. So that hey, that's gonna do it for us. Um make sure you're checking out the Mike and JD show channel on YouTube, checking them out, check them out on Patreon. Um they always do good work. So but if I don't if I don't uh if I'm not paying attention to an episode of TNA and I and I have to review it, I'll make sure I listen to Mike review it first and <laughs> deal with his ideas. So um but yeah, that's gonna do it for us. Thanks for for checking it out and uh we'll be back soon. Peace.